What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today I'm gonna to do a video topic on handling large constrictors safely and basically uh, ways that you can, you can minimize your risk when handling such large snakes. So I wasn't gonna do this video topic today, I was actually gonna do it tomorrow, but I thought today was a good time to put this story out there or this, this video out there since this recent story has come out about the lady in Indiana who was recently found with a reticulated python around her neck. Now, we don't know what actually caused her death. This could have been a medical reason, and it just happened to be with a reticulated python that was there, uh, or it could have been reasons uh, that were caused by the snake. I don't want to jump to conclusions. There's autopsies in place, and time will tell what actually happened. It's a terrible incident, and I don't really want to bring that into this video, but a lot of the topics that I'm going to talk about in this video kind of directly to relate to things that could have happened. So again, I don't want to make this seem like I'm uh, making a synopsis on what happened to her. It was a terrible incident, but I do want to somewhat bring in that, hey, there is a risk what, that we all take by keeping large constrictors. So I thought that actually a good way to start this out with, I know I said I didn't want to bring it in, but the snake they found around her neck was an eight foot snake. This is an eight foot snake. I, I never measure snakes and I actually just measured a snake and that's this one. So this is a male Burmese python. He's eight feet, about eight years old, maybe a little bit older than that, maybe 10 at this point. Uh, he's an ivory Burmese python. And I thought he was a really good example to use because one thing that I mentioned in some of my previous videos and something that you'll probably never or rarely see me do is put a snake around my neck. Uh, if anything, at the most that you might see me do is drape a snake around like this, but I always have this hand free so I can continuously push the snake often around my neck. As you see, this snake, naturally, it wants to hold on. So it's putting a lot of pressure right here on my neck. And I don't know if you guys have seen any choke out videos at all, but it's not, uh, it's not difficult to make a person go unconscious by just a simple constriction around their neck. So if you got put in a headlock, it would take you probably somewhere around five to 10 seconds before you lost consciousness and had no idea what was happening from there. From that point, it'll take you another 10 to 20 seconds to come about again once you've been choked out. Now snakes, think about the muscle of their body. They are meant to wrap things. Even if, even if they're not trying to constrict it as prey, they're meant to wrap onto things to hold on. So around my hand, it's wrapping a coil and that's what it does. So if I put a snake around my neck like this, it's now notice I still have my hand here. I don't want to have this happen to me in the video, but if I put a snake around my neck, it doesn't take much for this to close its coil and for me to lose control. Specifically, if I'm cleaning things and I have a snake around my neck like this, now I'm, I'm, I'm being very careful as I'm doing this and I know what's happening with the snake because I don't want this to happen to me on video. But if I were cleaning things, I'd have my hands free, I'd have the snake around my neck, and then it's very easy for this snake to just close its coil and just, just to hold on, not to, not to constrict me, but just to hold on so it doesn't fall off my neck. If it holds me like that for a few seconds, I'm gonna go unconscious, unconscious and hit the floor. So that is something that we always want to avoid. And this is for any size snake. This is, this is an eight foot Burmese python, but this could happen with a tiny milk snake. Uh, this could happen with anything. Any snake that constricts your neck has the ability to, to make you fall on the floor and drop. Now, what can happen after that? Typically, a snake would hit the floor and you would hit the floor and the snake would go away. It wouldn't continue to constrict. Who knows what the circumstances were, if this was even a reason for what happened in, in that specific situation. There's been all kinds of situations similar to this, not everywhere, but it's happened in the past. And typically, it's a result of us getting a little bit too comfortable with the animals. Again, not talking about the specific instance in, in Indiana, I don't know what happened in there and I don't want to really bring it up again out of just respect for the family and for the people. But I do think that we can learn a lot from this, not specifically as a story, but it generates a good discussion amongst keepers in order to continue handling these animals safely. So again, this snake's here, it's wrapped around my arm and it's constricted all the way around. If this were my neck, I would be out. So step one, is never do any snake of any size, put them around your neck. Step two is it's always good to have somebody in the distance, uh, in, in, in shouting range of whenever you're handing a large snake or any snake in that for that matter, especially if you're gonna put them around your neck. 
You should never do that, like I just mentioned, but if you are, you always need to think that this could happen to me. So it, it is important to have somebody in shouting range. This is about the size snake that I would handle by myself without somebody around. Uh, I do have somebody around for this video. You can't see them. They're over there. But uh, this is about the max size snake I would handle by myself. I'm going to pull out another snake, which I would always have somebody around for. Again, I know the temperament of these snakes. They're really good snakes, but it's more in case I just have a lapse of judgment and do something or, or do something I shouldn't be doing for one second. And that's all it takes to put me in a really bad situation. So I'm going to pull out another snake. Because you know I can't do a whole video with just one snake. And then we'll talk, kind of going a little bit further, about always having another person around. One minute. Going off camera for this for a second. I'm going to put this, uh, put this guy back in a bin. And we're going to pull out. So this is Grape Nut. I'm sure you guys have seen her in a couple of my other videos. She's also a Burmese python. And she is probably... I didn't measure her. And I should have. I apologize. So... Here's Grape Nut. She is much bigger than eight feet. Uh, if I had to guess, maybe 13 feet or so. And this is a snake that could easily take you down in a matter of seconds if it, if it got a good coil. But again, you see I have the snake dra draped around my back, not around my neck. Um, and where, where issues come in with handling large snakes. Now, I'm going to transition into uh, maybe a, an aggressive or, or a defensive snake. I don't like to use the term aggressive, but that's a term that people like to associate. So I don't necessarily want to use it as a descriptor of the animal's behavior, but more so you guys can understand. Uh, not everybody. I know some of you guys can know the difference. Same thing between tame and social. But uh, so with a snake like this, if this snake or any snake for that matter bites you, this is a really cool snake. She's calm. But if, if a snake of any size bites you, typically what they'll do is they'll coil you and they will tuck their head inside the coil. It's going to be really difficult to get a snake like that off of you by yourself, specifically if it got me like this. I don't have my arms free. I have my arms free, but if it wrapped me, my arms would be pinned against my side. And what I need to do to get this snake off, what would happen is the tail is usually what you would grab. So I would grab the tail and I would uncoil from the tail. If you can get it, sometimes they tuck the coil or the tail and the head within the coils so that nothing can really pull it apart. Once a snake is constricted, it's really difficult to get a snake off. Uh, it, it's, I mean, you can hit them in the head, poke them in the eyes. They're not going to let go. All that usually does to them is make them squeeze tighter and harder. And with large constrictors, us as humans, we're pretty big. So a snake has to be really large to take us down, or they just have to get us in this really weird position, like typically around our necks. This snake could constrict around my body all day, and although it would be uncomfortable for me, it's not going to hurt me, it's not going to kill me. Where it could happen is if it got me around my neck. And this doesn't matter if you're 400 pounds of solid muscle, if a snake gets you around your neck, a four-foot snake could bring you down, and assuming it continued to constrict, it may not asphyxiate, but if it continued to constrict and cut off blood flow to your brain, it could cause serious permanent damage. Now, if it was large enough, something like this, and you did pass out, then you could get asphyxiated and you could die from that sense. But this is kind of, again, a typical uh, safe handling instructions. I'm trying to think of things off the top of my head. Other things that I do, uh, always reading the snake and understanding the snake. Now, I don't know if you guys have saw, but I just did a, or I was just in a video with New England Reptile Distributors. I was up there visiting my buddy Kevin and all, all the other guys up there. And I took out a pied reticulated python, which was very defensive out of a cage. Now, I did a few things that I, I don't want to say are perfect, because it definitely wasn't perfect pulling the snake out. But the reason I was cautious on this is I don't know this animal. I've never seen this animal. I do, I'm not familiar with the caging. I'm not familiar with anything. I am walking into an environment with a defensive snake, trying not to get bit. Now, could I get bit? Yeah, I could get bit. And it's not so much... Yeah, it is. I don't want to get bit. I don't ever want to get bit. But a concern about getting bit is if this snake did bite me and wrap me, maybe even in a defensive way, sometimes you can piss off a snake enough that they bite and wrap and they'll just hold for a minute and then they'll drop and move. But if if I did piss off that snake enough, it bit me, it wrapped me, uh, one, it's going to hurt like hell. Two, it could cause a lot of damage to myself because a snake that size, like I've mentioned in other videos, has some pretty significant sized teeth. I mean, this is the head on this girl, and this is my hand, so that's a pretty serious head. I don't want to get bit by that thing. 
and the snake we were handling was also pretty large as well. So it's just things to keep in mind that you always want to be comfortable with where you are and where you're handling these snakes, how you're taking them out, because in, in even beyond so trying to understand the snake, uh, you need to understand the, the how the snake is. And that's really a push for why you want to raise snakes from a young age, uh, especially large snakes, is you can fully understand what to expect from this older animal. Uh, you, you, you know, I know this snake. I know what pisses it off. I know what, what makes it nice. It, it's, um, I know what keeps it calm and things like that. And typically there's things that will keep all snakes calm, but I am calm because I know everything about this snake. I've had it long enough to understand that. So it's a push to keep things uh, as as babies and raise them up. And, and I'm kind of rambling at this point, but I, I do just want to really push the fact that we need to be smart and we need to respect these animals and never underestimate that they are powerful, strong animals that, that can bring us down if we're, if we're doing stupid things or we misgu misjudge what we're doing. Uh, we can easily think, oh, I have this beautiful connection with this animal, but I just do one thing wrong that spooks it, and all of a sudden it, it takes me down, and I'm done. Uh, no different than dogs. You could have the best dog in the world that's, that's an awesome animal, but one thing spooks it, and it bites you all of a sudden. That bite could be pretty serious, or it could be minor, but it's just a matter of we need to be safe. There's things that you wouldn't do. You don't go up to a, a Belgian Malinois blowing its face, even if it's your best friend pet dog. There's just things that, that you have to account for and you can never underestimate. So hopefully this video was helpful with you guys. And uh, I'm going to keep do, keep coming these. I am going to do a video tomorrow still on uh, Burmese pythons and why I think they are good pets. Uh, I will also follow with another video on other snakes that I don't think are good pets and give my reasons for them. So a lot of people watched my previous video. They were shocked I put Burmese pythons as a good first pet. This is why I think they are good first pets right here. I mean, this is awesome. And we're going to go into a little bit of that tomorrow. But I did want to do this video to supersede that one as kind of an FYI warning before I told everybody to go out and get a Burmese python because they are not for everybody and not everybody should be keeping them. They need to be respected, and that's kind of how I think of things as we keep reptiles. So hopefully you guys like this video. Uh, hope I didn't ramble on too long. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll keep them coming. Thanks, guys.